In this video, we're going to start working on our back plate, and that's going to be built in the 3D compositing tool called Action. The first thing I'm going to do is hold my control key and tap on the left side so I can bring back my media panel. And remember, we placed five different images on our shelf reel. Now I want to bring them into the actual batch schematic. So I'm going to zoom back, control spacebar, and pan spacebar up so I have a little room down here. Then I'll go back to my shelf reel. I'll select all five of those clips while holding shift and just drag and drop them into the batch schematic. Inside the media panel, they've now been moved from the shelf reel and they've been placed on schematic reel one because that was the current schematic reel I had selected. And of course we see they've been added into our batch environment. I'd like to look at just the schematic for a second. So I'm gonna come down to our editing area and I'll tap on the left side, which brings just my schematic up. Control space bar to zoom back, and then I can pan and zoom in on just these images that I want to focus on. So as we can see, we've got five different images that we just brought in. And these are the elements we're going to use in the 3D compositing tool to create the background. You'll notice that a couple of the images have a separate mat, such as this one here, Alt Sin Beauty, a DPX image, also has an image called Alt Sin Mat. The moon DPX image does not have a mat, but the mountains image also has a separate mat. When you bring in media, you can bring in just the RGB information, the main input, and or you can bring a mat as a separate input so you can control them independently. You can also add any of the many tools we have inside of Batch to a clip prior to going into action. As we're going to see in a minute, there are many tools inside the action tool. Most of them have to do with working in a 3D environment because that's what action is. But there's also color correction and keen and the matchbox tools available in there. So some of the tools you'd have out here are available inside the action tool. But let's get an action tool and bring it into our schematic. So I come down to my bin. I see the action tool right there. I'm just going to pick it up and drag and drop it into my schematic. I'll zoom in on the action node just to explain a couple things. First of all, you'll notice that it has a green input for its background and it has one result output by default. You can have multiple outputs coming out of the action tool, but by default, you only have the main result. I'm going to come down to my editing panel and swipe again over on the left hand side to return to my two view layout. I'm also going to hold the control key and then click and tap on the left to remove my media panel. I want to zoom in just on this area where I've got my new footage I brought in and my action tool. So a nice hotkey, I've mentioned this before, is if I go over to my navigator, I hold the control key and I region select the area that I want to zoom in on and I release it, Flame will zoom in on that area. I'll double click on the action tool to access its parameters in the editing panel below. Looking down in the editing panel, you can see there's lots of different buttons and so on to access the different parameters inside the action tool. There's the node bin, there's the media, object, source, output, analyzer, so lots of different controls available to you. And also the action tool, just like the GMAS tracer tool, the action tool has its own relationship schematic that you can access by stepping into the tool. With this view over here selected, if I go to where it reads viewing and I click on my flyout, you'll notice we get a whole bunch of different viewing options because we have the action tool selected. One of them is the action schematic. Or you can use the tilde key as a hotkey to set this viewport to be the action schematic. But I'll just choose it from this flyout. Now, as I like to say, we just stepped into the action tool. And by default, all you have is a camera. Every action tool has a default camera. Now, because action is a true 3D environment, you have different views of looking at your scene from different angles. For example, if I select this viewport to activate it, I go back to my viewing. Right now, it reads output one comp default camera but I'll click on that and go to where it reads Action 3D Views. Here you'll see, just like a 3D application like Maya or 3ds Max, you have the different views and angles you can look at your scene. I'll choose Top, or I could have used Shift 4 as a hotkey, and now we are looking down on our scene. If I zoom back, you'll see there's our camera. I can click on it to select it, and then it'll be highlighted. With the camera selected, if I go to my Object tab, you'll see all the different parameters we have relevant to controlling our camera. 
We could change the position, the rotation, the insert, and so on. I will hit Control Z to undo that because I want the camera to remain in its default position. If I click to deselect the camera, you'll notice it is not highlighted. It's only when you select the camera will you see it highlighted. I'm going to go down and click on the node bin button to access the node bin and all the tools in action. And as I mentioned before we stepped into the action tool or even applied it, action has its own set of tools that are relevant to working in a 3D environment. You'll see you have 3D path, 3D shape, 3D text. There's, There's different type of tools such as mapping tools like a diffuse map, displacement map, extended by cubics, which allows you to manipulate and bend your actual objects inside of action. An action has its own set of sub bins focused on different tasks you want to perform. Clicking on the effects node button once again gives me all the tools that are available for batch, the node-based compositing world we were just working in. These tools are not tools you add into the action tool. These are only relevant in batch. So let me discard my effects node and go back to looking at my action tool. And as I said earlier, that doesn't mean there are tools inside of action that are also available in batch, such as color correction, keying, the matchbox tool. These are all available. They're just applied differently inside of action than they are inside the batch environment, which we will explore and look at. Now, looking just to the left of our node bin, you'll see a list of the media as you bring in and use it inside the action tool. Right now, all we see is one field with a B, for background, just like you saw on the node inside the schematic, it only had one input. That's the default. Let me click this viewport over here where we're looking down on our scene, and I'll hit F4, which is the hotkey, as we know, to look at the end result of the tool. If I click where it reads Media, we now go to the Media tab, and here's another list of what media will be part of the action tool. But in this area, under media, you have different tools you can apply to the images that you bring in, such as color correction, keying, blurring, and so on. Also, on the media tab, when you bring your images in, you have the options to control whether the front of the image is on, whether the mat of the image is on, whether the background is on. I'm going to click in this viewport here and hit the escape key to step back out into the schematic. And once again, we're back out in our batch schematic. With my action tool selected, I want to point out a couple things about using an image in your background input. Notice that my action composite is 1920 by 1080. It matches the resolution of what my project was set up to be. If I go to my node preferences for action, and then go to the rendering tab, as I just pointed out inside the schematic, the resolution is set to match the settings from my project. But also notice there's an option called same as background. I'm pointing this out because this is one of those gotchas to me when you first start learning flame and you start using the action tool. I'm gonna take this clip, this moon clip, which as you can see the resolution is 2880 by 1620. But my resolution for my action tool is 1920 by 1080. I'll take the main result output and I'll feed it into the green input for the action tool. And look what just happened to my resolution of my action. It jumped and changed to match the input of the background. That is because of this preference right here on the node preferences under rendering. I don't want my resolution of my action to match this image. I don't want my action resolution to match this. So I could have changed the preference before I fed the background into that input so I could have changed my preference prior to feeding this moon image in as the background, or I can change it now. I can come down here and change it from same as background and choose user defined and choose my choice, which was 1920 by 1080. And then I have to click the apply button. The resolution is back to being the 1920 by 1080 that I wanted. Okay, let's continue talking about the background input because there's some other things that are very important to understand. If I knew that this image was always going to be my background and I didn't need to transform it in any way whatsoever, this workflow would be fine. If I select my action tool, I hit the tilde key again, we step back into our schematic. I want to point out as I zoom and look around, I do not see that background represented as nodes inside the action schematic. I do see it down here inside the media list. It's now telling me my background is using moon image. 
and I do have some control over the image as far as blurring it or color correcting it and keying it and so on. The workflow with this media panel or this media list here is as you are adding to the media that we're going to be building a list of the media that we're using. You can come in here and add a color correction or add blurring and so on. The workflow is this. I double click where it reads CC. I step into the color correction tool that is now applied to my background. And if I make any change to this, it is going to affect that background. If I choose exit, I get out of the color correction tool and we can see in the viewport there is my color correction applied to the background. You also notice a little white check mark now where it reads CC. It's telling me there's a color correction applied to the background image. If I want to disable the color correction, I can hold the Option or Alt key and click once on that little check. You'll see it now goes black because I've disabled, I bypassed it. If you want to remove a color correction or any tool you apply in this area, hold Control and Option and click and you delete that tool and now the background has no color correction. So when you feed in an image as a background, let me go back to our batch schematic. So when you feed an image into your background input for action, you do not have transformation control. You cannot scale it, you cannot move it. It is always just gonna be the furthest element from the camera. No matter what you do with the other layers or objects or 3D things that you create in action, this would always be the background. And that's not how I want to build my background that we're gonna use as our main composite, not the background in here, the background that's part of our batch. So I'm gonna click and drag and get rid of that connection. I do not want to feed this moon image in as a background. To bring media into the action tool can be done in several different ways. Notice that this area right here, you see this black square and it says new media and apply and over here that's available to me whether my node bin is being displayed or my media panel is being displayed i could click where it reads new media and it brings up my batch group in the reels where i could come and pick a clip and then that clip would be added into the action tool I'm not going to do that though i'm going to show you how i like to work inside the action tool because it's more visual to me so I'll come down where it reads new media once again. I'll click and hold on it since it's a flyout and choose new input. Now you'll notice, first of all, in our media list, there is a new input. Nothing's been connected to it yet, so it doesn't read anything under name. But I have an extension that I now can start connecting media to, which then becomes part of the action tool. And you'll notice on the extension, you have two inputs. You've got the red main RGB input and you have the blue matte input. So for example, if I take the Alt Sin Beauty clip, I drag its result from this, drag it onto the red input, I connect it. I take the yellow result of my matte clip and I'll feed that into the matte input. And then I'm going to click on my action tool and you'll notice that now we have our front and our matte applied to this image that's inside the action tool. Now I want to create another input for this, but I'm going to use the hotkey instead of the button, and that's Control N. So I hit Control N, and a new input is added. I'll take the yellow result for this clip, this mountain, and I'll take the matte end result, and I'll feed that into the matte input. Let's create one more for our moon, Control N. This one doesn't have a matte, so all I need to connect is the red input to the yellow result. I'll hold Option and Shift and I get my front extension, and I'll just click on the yellow, and I added it into my scene. Now I've brought in three different images, and they're placed on three different layers inside the action tool. With the action tool selected, I will hit the tilde key to step into the action schematic in this view. I'll use my navigator and slide over so we can see our three images that we just brought in. The default workflow is whenever you bring in a new input, Action is going to create an image source of your input and it's going to attach and access automatically to that image source so that you can manipulate its transformation. And as I mentioned, this schematic, the action schematic, is a relationship schematic. It's showing me that this axis is attached to this image source and the little arrow is indicating the relationship. This axis is controlling that image. This axis is controlling this image and so on and so on. Now the schematic here, this is not how you control the actual hierarchy of the layers. 
you can control the Z depth. So for example, I take this clip right here and I go to the object tab. I can now manipulate this in Z space. And you'll notice that when the position for the Z goes minus zero, it goes behind the other layers. If I select this viewport once again, I hit shift four, we're looking down once again on my scene. Let me zoom back a little bit. And as I select a layer, you'll see it now is indicating where it's at inside 3D space. And I can use the manipulator if I wanted to, to adjust the Z position, or I can adjust it with the parameters. I'll hit F4 to go back to look at the end result. And I'll click in the Z field and choose zero, enter, so put it back. So all my layers are back at their default position. If I want to control the hierarchy, of my layers. I don't do it on the media tab. This is where you access the different media that's available to you, where you can turn the front on, the mat on, a mat off, and so on, and add those color correction and blurring tools like I showed you with the background. To control the hierarchy of your layers, you do that in the priority editor. Over on the left-hand side, where you see all these buttons, I can click Priority, and there are my three different layers, and they are stacked in the order that I brought them in. I'll discard the priority editor just to show you one of the other swiping hotkeys. In fact, we looked at this with the GMAS Tracer. If I tap to the bottom of my UI, I access the priority editor. If I wanted to take this image, the moon image, and move it all the way in the back, I could just choose this option that says push to back, and it would then move it to be the bottom layer. Or I can just pick it up and drag and drop it on the very bottom of this priority list so that it is now the background layer. I'm also going to take this second image and drag it in between the two layers. So now I've manipulated the hierarchy of the layers, not the Z position. We're gonna do that a little bit later. I just wanted to show you how you can access the priority editor with the swipe or the button, and you control the hierarchy of your layers. I'll swipe down to get rid of my priority editor. So now we've got the three image sources brought into our action scene, and that's gonna end this video. In the next video, we're gonna continue looking at the action tool and start positioning our layers where we want them to be in 3D space.